So we got the Volantex Ranger here. I'm gonna do a long range waypoint mission all the way down this valley and get some hyperlapse type shots. And I'll talk about more of this setup after I land. I'm trying to get up in the air before the sun comes up. Okay, the plane's up there circling in return mode. I'm going to now initiate auto mode. Okay, we're on our way. My FPV ground station is not very elegant here. It's just uh, fat shark goggles with a 2.4 gigahertz module. Last spring during my autonomous soaring video, I was having problems with Dragonlink telemetry working well, but right now I'm using uh, Dragonlink V3 with the high power telemetry receiver in the airplane and it's working great. Landing this thing through FPV is just super fun for some reason. I just feel like a full-scale pilot coming down the road, touching down. So the reason I built up this plane was for long distance flights and long duration flights. And I'm using these lithium ion batteries. These are the 21700s, I believe. They're the same cells that the Tesla uses. So for these flights, I had eight cells in the plane. Each cell is 5,000 milliamp hour, and I've got two 4S packs here that I was running in parallel. Now I'm going to send it up on just a really basic waypoint mission around here and chase it with the Mavic and try and get some air-to-air -air video. So it's a nice day up there somewhere. I've got this bank of clouds that's kind of over here to the east and it's pretty low. So I'm gonna fly up and see if I can get above it and get some glimpses of the nice sunny day that it should be. And with a fully manual FPV plane, I wouldn't do that because then it would be really easy to get lost up there above the clouds. But since this has full autopilot with return to home capabilities, it's no problem. <laughs>
was a fantastic flight. Now I've got the Nazgul 5 inch FPV quad here and I'm gonna take it up as the plane is orbiting in return to home mode and see if I can chase it myself and get some air to air shots. <laughs> So I've got the Ranger out here in eastern Washington. Um, I think this place is called Saddle Mountain. But basically there's just this long wide open kind of valley that follows this ridge line and I'm going to try and beat my long range FPV record and fly all the way down to the end of it and back. I've got the GoPro Hero 7 here on the wing and I'm gonna put that in time warp mode which is basically just a stabilized time lapse. I've got my FPV ground station over here with a 2.4 gigahertz CP directional antenna, a little DVR monitor on the back, some goggles over here, and then I've got a mission planner running on a laptop here. Um, I'm gonna do this whole flight autonomously, so it's gonna be flying to waypoints. And I'm using Dragon Link for telemetry, so the same radio that's doing the this kind of control is working for all the telemetry data like GPS position, altitude, etc, etc. And I've got the Dragon Link high power telemetry transmitter in here and the antenna is out there on the wing. These are the batteries I'm using. They're homemade lithium ion 21700 cells and I've got three four cells in parallel. So that gives us a total capacity of 15,000 milliamp hour four cell. So that's with all the batteries loaded into the fuselage. I think this is an older Immersion RC 2.4 gigahertz video transmitter. All right. Alright, so let's launch this thing. Okay, we're in mission mode. Oh wow, it's way over there. It's going a long ways. I don't know exactly, but I think this waypoint mission is 24 kilometers, maybe a little more. Alright, so I'm going to come over here to my ground station. Um, all is looking well so far on the screen. Looks like we're cruising at about 15 or 16 meters per second. So I'm going to put this dragon link since it's the main telemetry radio very important i'm gonna put it up here clear line of sight just like that video is not as important it's kind of down lower and we're chilling i'm approaching five miles out and the video is still looking really good So we're about eight miles away now and the video is getting a little staticky. If we go over here, we'll see that we're down to 15.1 volts, so we're still doing good on voltage. We are gonna have a slight headwind coming back, which isn't great for long range flying, but I think we should be more than fine for this flight. Over here, I've got some water boiling. Gonna make some uh, Kathmandu curry. There's one way to calm your nerves while doing long distance flying. It's uh, eating curry. <laughs> Not getting data back very quickly, but we're getting it.
So the plane is almost home now. I can't hear it or see it yet, but it's getting close. And I think if I have enough battery left, which it looks like I do, I might FPV it up to that ridge line and see if I can feel any lift. Now there's no wind down here, but up there, that's like a almost 2,000 foot hill, I think. Up there, there could be some uh, ridge lift, so I might cruise up there and check it out. Amazing, 24 kilometers, I think, something like that, and it's home. That's awesome. Okay, it hit its last waypoint, so it should start to circle. It's circling, okay, so I'm gonna take control and go cruise up there. I'm gonna drop my throttle now and see how the plane does with altitude. Okay, throttle's dropped. Looks like I'm slowly losing altitude. Which is not super surprising because it is dead calm here on the ground. So there's probably not really any ridge lift going on up there. But it's still really pretty with the setting sun at 3.30, 3.30 p.m. Okay, I'm gonna chop my throttle now and glide home. At the last minute there, I looked up and landed line of sight. The GoPro is still going. Nice. So RDU Pilot says I used 4,008 milliamp hours, and there's 15,000 milliamp hours of battery capacity on board. I don't know how accurate that 4,000 number is, but if it's true, I could fly for a lot longer. Right now the battery is at 14.5 volts. That's 3.625 volts per cell. And you can take these lithium ion cells down to like two point something volts per cell. You can take them really low. So yeah, I could probably fly this plane for close to twice as long or more. Well, I'm super happy with that flight. I'm gonna pack this thing up and head home. So every time I make an autonomous vehicle video, I get a lot of questions on how the autopilot works or how it's set up. So here's a brief explanation. This plane is running a Pixhawk 2.4.8 flight controller, which is a little outdated at this point, but it works fine. There's the Pixhawk jammed in the fuselage there. Now the Pixhawk is basically just a little computer and it's running the Ardu Pilot software. There's a ton of information on the Ardu Pilot website, so definitely check it out if you're interested. The Pixhawk isn't the only flight controller that can run Ardu Pilot. There's a list of many flight controllers that can all run this software and they all pretty much work in the same way. A lot of them can run other autopilot software too, like PX4, which is more common in commercial applications. So we have our flight controller running ArduPilot in this case, and you probably noticed I was using a laptop to view data coming from the aircraft. The software on that laptop is called Mission Planner, and it's also not the only option. There are several others like Q Ground Control, but Mission Planner is the most common to use with ArduPilot. So to get the Pixhawk flight controller sending and receiving data from the laptop, we need a telemetry radio. In most cases, you would use a separate radio modem like a standard Pixhawk radio or an RFD900X for long range flying. But in this case, I'm using the telemetry radio function of my Dragon Link. Now the Dragon Link's primary function is to send my RZ controller commands to the receiver on the aircraft, which then passes them onto the flight controller. In this case, I'm also using Dragon Link to send the telemetry data. So I have the transmitter connected to the laptop and the UART pins on the Dragon Link receiver are connected to the UART pins on the flight controller. The benefit to this is just that you have less radios on the aircraft. Now the flight controller is also connected to a GPS receiver, a power meter to measure current and voltage, and all the servos that steer the airplane. In addition to the autopilot system, we also have the FPV system. In this case, the two are not connected. It is possible to get an OSD display of all the telemetry data from the flight controller in the video that is streaming down, but I don't really need that in this case because I have all the data on the laptop. And that's it, the whole system right there. There's loads of information on the docs section of the Ardu Pilot website, so check that out if you want to learn more information. That's all for this video. Thanks for watching. Bye.